Hello, everyone. Welcome back once again. Uh, as always, I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, this is today's lesson is going to be um, a kind of a part two to my last lesson. That was the Pat Martino diminished parental forms, and uh, where I showed you how if you lower a string, you uh, one half step, you get a dominant seven chord in a um, diminished chord, and if you raise that string a half step, you get a f flat seven. Of a minor seven flat five, you get a minor seven flat five chord. So please refer to that lesson first. It'll make this one a lot easier. And uh, so diving right in here, what I'm doing today is basically taking those dominant seven chords and showing you how to play those vertically up the neck. All right, so we're going to start out here with the uh, first four string clusters on one, two, three, four, and then we'll go to the uh, middle four, the bottom four. Then we'll do the two non-adjacent clusters. So what I'm going to do is start out and go through all of the dominant seven chords, and then uh, we'll go through all the minor seven flat five chords. I like to practice them both ways where I do something like that. There we go. And then go to the minor seven flat five that you get from lower, that same string, raising it as opposed to lowering it. But I suggest, uh, in order to get them under hand, <laughs> to begin with, we just take the dominant seven chords and learn all of those up and down the neck and then go to the minor seven flat fives. So I'm gonna go through them kind of slowly and I'm gonna play them arpeggiated so you guys can hear what the four, three, two, one strings are, those notes are. If I just play that, you wouldn't be able to tell quite as well what this actual note is on the string. So remember the four dominant sevens we get from this cluster are E flat seven, a7, C7, and F sharp 7. We go down there, down there, down there, down there. So starting with the E flat 7, I'm going to go up and down. That E flat would resolve to a A flat. If it's a five chord, so then the next one in that cluster, we drop that G string down to A7, and we have that's the fifth in the bass now. So you'll notice, guys, when you go up through these, uh, E flat seven had the tonic in the bass, this one has the fifth. The C chord will have the third in the bass, and the F sharp seven will have the flat seven in the bass. And so what I'm doing going up through these inversions is I'm just going up to the next note on each string. Fifth in the bass, flat seven, tonic, third, fifth, third, tonic, flat seven, fifth. So the next dominant seven chord in this first four string cluster uh, would be going down to the C. Chord, C dominant seven, so starting with the third in the bass there. So that's the C chord. Then the last one in this cluster will be F sharp seven, which has the flat seven in the bass. Okay, now we're going to move on to the middle four string cluster. And our first um, dominant seven chord will be, I'll start these on the bottom string going down. You can do it any way you want to, but this gives us C7. And the next chord will be F sharp seven, and the third one will be A7, and the last one will be E flat seven. <clears throat> so starting with C7, though, going through its inversions, tonic there, third in the bass, fifth, flat seven. Next chord, we have the F sharp seven with the fifth in the bass beginning. And as that goes to the flat seven, it just goes up through the chord on the bass note. Okay, now 
the next chord will be a, dropping that B flat down to an A, which gives us an A dominant seventh chord. So next chord, an E flat seven with the seventh in the bass. Flat seven. Okay, now dropping it down to our bottom four strings. Uh, and remember our four seven chords we get here are the first one dropping down, you get an F sharp seven. Drop that second string, I mean the fifth string down, you have a C seven. The fourth string gives us an E flat seven. And the G string dropping down gives us an A seven. So starting with the F sharp seven there. And we're just basically taking these other chord forms and moving them up the neck and the F sharp 7. So they're basically like the caged positions. It's a very similar thing. So the second one will be, remember, moving down the, the A string on the from the C sharp to the C. Now we have C7. dropping that D string down a half step from E to E flat. That's E flat seven. So now the last one on this bottom cluster, we drop that B flat down to an A. So then we'll go to the next chord formation, which is the non-adjacent cluster, where we skip the A string. Oh, and these four um, dominant sevens also, you have this, this form, drop the D string down, you get that e, e flat seven, drop the G string down, you get the A seven, drop the C down, B string down, you get the C chord. So starting with the S sharp. E flat seven. Then we have drop the B string, B flat, G string, I'm sorry, B flat down to an A, starting with the A seven, flat seven in the bass. You have the C7 for the non-adjacent cluster. That's that cluster. Now we go to the last one, the last non-adjacent cluster on the strings one, two, three, and five. Starting with the A string lowering the C sharp to an A, we have the first chord we have a C, C dominant 7, second one we drop the G string down to an A7, then we drop the B string down to E flat for E flat 7, then we drop the E string down to a F sharp for F sharp 7. So starting on that C7 chord, Starting on the A7 chord with the third in the bass. Then lower the B string. 
string down a half step to that E flat, and we start with the E flat seven, seventh in the bass. one guys we drop this E string G note down to an F sharp for our F sharp 7 with the fifth on the bass starting out and I believe that's all five chord clusters uh, And that would be all of the dominant seven chords. So you may wonder, uh, why is Chuck trying to teach me all these crazy places to play these chords, man? Uh, well, there are actually uh, things you can do with this stuff, um, you know, compositionally. It's just good to have all these different places to play a dominant seven and a minor seven flat five underhand, in my opinion. You know, like say, for instance, if you're going to play a, uh, you know, just you're comping in jazz or, or pop or whatever, uh, you know, you're going to do like a... Do a two five one and well let's say let's keep it simple key of uh, C. You could do your you'd have different places to go. It teaches you more passing chords instead of just doing a minor seven to a G seven. You can do your minor seven flat five. Or you could do a. to a G7. Just different places to play it, man. That's all. <laughs> and uh, I think I want to put out here soon, too, uh, some kind of like a, some kind of like a boogie-woogie way to do it. Uh, like using this uh, bottom um, non-adjacent cluster where you're using just the bottom string. <clears throat> Big E, a D, a G, and a B strings. So you could do something like this. this out yet exactly but I'll work on that and uh, do some di chord diagrams or a tablature to that as well so also guys all the chord diagrams for these dominant seven and um, minor seven flat five pat martino magic chord part two lessons are on my website uh the subscribe for exclusive content page and once again guys don't forget to subscribe like and uh hit the notification bell i'll see you next time take care mm -hmm.